Get your Marvel Legends at Dorkside Toys. Bub. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends, I guess, X-Force Legends Wendigo Wave. Or Wendigo, if you're nasty. Now, as always, I got a whole case from Dorkside Toys. I got them all in at the same time. I might as well review them all at the same time, right? Once you pop, you can't stop, I guess. You, once I get one open, I want to open all of them at the same time. This just helps out. So we're just going to go through this fast and furious style. I live life a Marvel Legends release at a time. Now, I did cheat and get Cannonball at San Diego Comic-Con because I was interested and it was right there. I might as well, right? And I wanted to do some tinkering, but we'll get to that. The wave is in your X-Men yellow color scheme. You get Nightcrawler, who I'm really excited about, yes. There's Guardian, there's Mr. Sinister, there is Cannonball, Boom Boom, and there is Wolverine in X-Force style. On the sides, we get all nice comic... <laughs> Give me here. Comic style art. On the back, that art in full, a bio of each character, the rest of the characters in the wave, and then the Build-A-Figure all charted out between the figures. So who are we gonna do first? Let's uh, let's look at Wolverine. First up, let's get it out of the way, and that's kind of why I started with this figure, but there is some reuse here, and I have no problem with that at all, really. Hasbro has kind of developed the perfect Wolverine body. In hand, it feels small. You're used to bigger figures, but then you remember, at least originally, Wolverine was a pretty short guy. So the torso is reused, the crotch, the upper legs, but you do get new boots here. You get new gloves with the wraps. And at first you kind of think, oh, that's the same head, but you'll notice the horns are a little bit different and there is this cutout right here. So a cool little attention to detail unless this head comes on somebody else and I'm completely blowing smoke up your ass. But I like this costume because it adds some chunk to the limbs. It's not just skin tight gloves. It's not just skin, well, <laughs> not skin top boots with the wings coming up, but this is more tactical. And then there's the color scheme, which I've always thought, man, Wolverine's kind of a stealthy guy. Why does he run around in yellows and blues and bright colors? This works as more of a stealth type costume. Like I said, new belt. There's some tech detail to it that kind of matches the gloves and then the boots too with straps. But the other big difference is the claws. You see that they're thicker and then from the side, they are much more stylized. They go from thin to thicker, almost like these would not come out of his hand. But sometimes they're drawn in the comic books like that, so I'm okay with having a different style every now and then. You'll also notice they're more coming out of the knuckles instead of the uh, holes on the back of his hands where these keep the holes open in the comics, at least, you know, in, in real life. But the biggest thing about these is I did not mess with these at all. They came out of the package like this. So if you got to thicken them up, if you have to stylize them a little bit, I am okay as long as they come out like this. I, I like some straight claws. Get up to the head though, and I, I like the sculpt. I like the serious look. There could be some color to the lips to kind of bring them out a little bit, but you'll notice a, a, some paint slop here and there, especially between the black and the grays. Well, even between the black and the skin tone right there. The red's kind of all over the place. Luckily, he's two per case. I can check the other one later, see if it's any better. You'll also see some kind of shininess right here. Don't know what that is. But articulation, there is a hinge in the top of the neck with a ball going up into the skull. Can look up, looks down. Not a lot of tilt, not a lot of clearance down in there. Swivel, butterfly shoulders move forward, move back. Shoulder hinges out to about right there. Swivels around, swivel at the bicep. Double elbow because of the glove cuff right there and the bulkiness of the bicep, he can get a little past 90. Hinge, swivel, and man, those claws, I don't know. They just feel a lot more sturdy than the little ones, which makes sense. There's more material there. Torso hinges forward really far, arcs back, swivel at the waist. You gotta watch the belt. You can either drop it low for some bikini look or raise it high for old man Logan. Ball at the hip comes all the way forward. Nice back, actually. Oh, and that uncovers that. They still haven't figured out how to mold pegs in two different colors. The gray on the outside, it has to be gray. This is the visual side. You don't look at the inside as much, but when you do see it, it's like, oh, there's gray. Same goes for the black hinge up under the shoulder. There's some paint slopped on there, but it doesn't really cover. But at the same time, it needs to be black for up here where it's actually showing through the black most of the time. Out, eh, not bad. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, great range, but not quite up to ass. I was about to say swivel at the boot, but that's molded from knee all the way down to ankle. Hinge back, hinge forward a little bit, and forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, nothing. You get these bulky claws, I guess. Yeah. Size wise, Logan measures up to about five and a half inches to the top of his actual head. He's very consistent with some of the other Wolverines we've gotten. That body is just... It's so perfect. Because as you can see with Domino and Cyclops, this Wolverine is appropriately short. And then, let's get this one out of the way. 
We'll do Cannonball next. Now I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing, I know. It's essentially half an action figure, where instead of legs, we got an accessory piece. But at the same time, if I had gotten legs with this figure and this was a swap out piece, I would probably use this. But since the option isn't there, it's more of a, we didn't get legs with this, why not? Because they made it to where it does pop apart. It's just a pin. It's no friction. They didn't peg it in there and then expand it and you know, it's stuck. You gotta heat it up or something. It is pretty easily removable. And what we and what we do get of Sam, well, when his head's not jutted forward, is pretty good looking. I like the purple costume. This reminds me of the old Toy Biz 5 inch figure. Some puffiness to the jacket up here, the collar's coming up, the wrinkles on the sleeves, the big, I, I, I like flight gloves. I don't know much about flying, but they look like old aviation gloves. The same goes for the headgear and the goggles up here, even though the goggles, they seem kind of small. He pulls them down, they're just going to cover his eyeballs, not anything else. When I think of Cannonball, I think of big bulky goggles. But at the same time, that's the way the old 5-inch figure was, so I, I can't complain too much. And then for the blast, like people have commented, it's not like his legs go away whenever he's blasting. They're usually out and covered, so I would have liked to have seen this wider, kind of maybe spreading out like this. But for what this is, with the oranges down here fades into a yellow up here and then the actual flaminess of the bottom uh, I, I can't complain too much well i will complain about one thing it should have had some kind of wall mount here because i think in my display i'm not going to have him just blasting straight up i'm going to have him looking up arced back arms out and find some way to mount this to the wall. So he'll be blasting out past the other figures, maybe even above. You know, utilizing this to save space on my shelf instead of taking up more of it. For articulation, it's a standard hinge at the top of the neck with a ball going up into the skull, but look at all that movement. So you get nice tilt. Looks down, kicks back, can look up. Then there's swivel. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder comes up to there, but you'll notice where I started from on that trip up to the top. The arm only goes down to here. You can't put the arm down by his side. So he's constantly blasting. He's also constantly in blast flying mode. There's a ledge or shelf right there that hits the body as it comes in. Arm swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Not shabby at all. Hinge. Swivel. Hinge at the abs. Comes forward. Oh, jacket kind of got caught, but goes forward that far. Arcs back. And then there's a swivel at the waist. For accessories, we get... well. I, I, I guess this. Size-wise, Cannonball is blasting up to about seven inches tall, which puts him just barely above some of the taller figures. But he does look good with some of his X-Force teammates. But like I said, I got one of these at San Diego Comic-Con. I've been kind of just messing around with other legs and such, and I came up with this. Now this is the waist down from Paladin. The legs were already purple for the most part, but you'll notice the two purples don't really match, which is no different than most of Hasbro's figures when it's colors between paint and plastic. So if anything, I made that more accurate to Hasbro figures. I painted the white in here, needs another couple of coats. I took the knife sheath off. I painted the boots brown, need another, like some dry brush to make a match up here, but I like this. I haven't found a good connection point yet. It's just kind of sitting there until I come up with something, but I'm thinking on the, my second blast, I'm gonna cut out the hole and try to sink it into that crotch. Also, I came in with a Dremel and shaved those ledges, shelves, whatever they are, the stops off, so his arms would drop down a little bit further. So he's more in a relaxed position, but <laughs> once I figure out a wall mount for this, this will probably be how I display it, even though I have this. Next up, let's add to the Alpha Flight shelf. Whoa, 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 whoa. When did Hasbro start putting limbs through the holes? Both his, well, his hand there at least, and then both the feet are sticking through the package. Not that it matters. Oops. Right off the bat, this is even more reused than Wolverine. This was, I think, originally Spider UK body. Was it something before this? Who knows, but this is the one I always remember. Well, of course it has a new head. If this had Batman ears, it would be the perfect Batman head. But I'm okay with this musculature here. I'm okay with the paint, even though we lost that metallic red from the prototype. I would have liked to have seen that, but we still get a metallic white here. It's not the marbleized plastic we're used to, the swirly twirly. It just looks more like a pearlescent kind of white. The red is a little bit ratty in places, especially between the parts. You can see here and then right here, but it's kind of a complicated costume to do in 3D because of all of its straight lines. Following this all the way down to here, that's a lot of hills and valleys and mountains and bumpies. And even though Jimmy Hudson ain't happy, I feel like this works. I always thought of him as kind of a hard ass anyway, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Going over articulation, there's the hinge, there's the bowl. Can look up, looks down, you do get a little bit of tilt. Swivel, 
tough detents in the shoulders coming up to about right there. Then that swivels around. Rotation at the bicep. Double elbow, but notice it's not very cut out at the top. So you get, well, not terrible. It's better than Wolverine. What can I say? There you go, Jimmy. You beat Wolverine at something. Tough detents at the hands too. Swivel. Crunches forward. Arcs back. Swivel at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip. Can go, well, past 90. Back, not so much. Out. The usual Spider-Man 45. Swivel. Double knee. Well, actually... <laughs> It, it's good for an action figure. It's past 90, but not as far as you would think. It just bunches up too bad back there. Swivel at the calf. Hinge at the ankle. Ah! Ankle hinges all the way back. Really good forward, too. And then forward-facing pin for Rocker. Boy, this wave is light on accessories so far. Jimmy just comes with his bad attitude. Guardian stands at six and a half inches tall. And even if you're not happy with the body use here, it's still... 1,000 times better than this. And then for no reason, here he is beside the Marvel Legends Captain Britain. Well, there's a reason. He's coming in a comparison later. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and he's here to hold up the shitty Guardian. And then there's this. I know a lot of people missed out on Puck. I know a lot of people don't care for how short the Sasquatch is. I agree. I, it needs shorter legs, more torso, and about an inch more on height. But this does look good together. And then here he is with Wolverine and Cyclops. I kind of feel like this should be the standard Cyclops body, but that's an argument for a whole other day. Let's crack into Boom Boom. Hey! There's the accessories. And no, it's not the Jubilee head. And for Boomer, right, good grief. Boom Boom. For having such a simple design, it's a striking figure and it's because of the pink. It just stands out on the shelf against all the other figures. Sure, you have the vest, you have the gloves, you have these bracers above the gloves, belt, strap, boots with the little hang downs on top of those too. But it's the pink. Well, and then the green goggles up on top kind of a nice contrast to all that, but it, it's the pink. Without those few things on top of the body, it's just a, well, a blank body. You do get the now standard Marvel Legends female hand, which is either spell casting and power using or just stop in the name of love. Don't get me wrong, there's nice sculpting to the vest. It has that same kind of poofiness that the cannonball jacket has. The belt, I think, is reuse actually. But the head is what sets it off. Well, besides the pink, you know. Unlike Jubilee, the goggles are sculpted to the head, but the green just stands out. And really, I remember Boom Boom like this all the time, so I don't mind non-removable goggles here. The earrings stand out nicely when you hit the light just right. The pink lips tie it down to the body, and then the hair is very, very nicely sculpted along with a wash to bring out all the detail. So a lot of it's the head, but then there's the pink body. Hinge, lots of room at the ball in the skull. Can look up, looks down. Ah, tilt for that perfect boom boom attitude swivel arm hinges up past 90 swivels around hinges swivel at the elbow which maybe it's on backwards no nope, either way you don't quite reach 90 and then that swivels hinge swivel ball joint in the mid torso and at first i thought ooh, this has nothing but it is very very tight you can crunch forward you can arc back not a lot of side to side twist Ball coming out to the hip, comes up to 90. Back, out, worse than Spider-Man. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, is she going to beat everybody in this wave so far? Push, bing. This is a separate piece right here, so lift it up. You can get ankle back to there. Forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. And hot doggy, we got accessories. The left hand comes off. Be careful with that because this can slip off if it goes off into the carpet. It's gone forever. But there is this very nice effect hand for the left. It's kind of a transition out to her boom boom effect. It's just a nice little effect that demonstrates her power. And if Cannonball is going to be blasting out of the wall, she's going to be throwing some time bombs. Were they called time bombs? But if you want her still getting ready for the countdown, there's this other effect that she can kind of hold. Is there something to hold on there? I guess you could have this on its own stand going out somewhere, but she doesn't really like to hold it. Oh, well, you can kind of hook it. Put it in her hand, kind of like that maybe. And then finally, besides the standard head, that pops off. The other one pops right on. And it's essentially the same head, but you can see that the cheeks are a little bit out like she's actually blowing that bubble. It's a nice effect we first saw with Jubilee, I think. Boom Boom in the comics a lot back in the day was blowing bubbles, chewing gum, that kind of thing. So this is another good representation of the character, which is how I'm gonna display it along with that power effect. Stand up, loosen the ankle a little bit. There we go. Boom Boom stands at, whoa, six and a quarter inches tall. Here she is with Domino and Cable. I thought that fits pretty well. At six and a quarter inches tall, I thought, ooh, that's tall, but it's not bad. And then here she is with Cannonball and Shatterstar. Huh, this team's rounding out kind of nicely. Anyone ever want Mr. Sinister to show up in the comics and go, let's get Sinister? Just me? Okay. Good grief, this one's got some heft to it. And what is going on with this? Oh, 
It's not too bad. Oh, and I was gonna say, we get our first 100% new sculpt of the wave, but technically, that was Cannonball. But this one is much more apparent. Just look at all the banded metal look to this body. If we didn't have a Kick-Ass Colossus already coming, I would be attempting to at least customize parts of this into a Colossus. The metallic sheen of this blue just helps accentuate that metal look even further. And I thought in the prototypes, some of this was black, but this is actually a darker blue on the gloves, the shoulder pads, the collar, at least the back of the collar, up going around to the cape, and then the boots, which, man, Mr. Sinister's fashion sense of wearing two different kinds of boots at the same time. That's a bit avant-garde there, Nathan. And it's fairly smooth, except for some wrinkles right here. The wrinkles are nicely sculpted, and I think it's smooth to kind of contrast against all the sculpting that's on the metal parts here. So your eye is drawn to certain places. It's, it's very nicely done visually. The red here is painted fairly clean. This belt seems like a separate piece, but it's well, is it glued down? We're not used to that with Hasbro. Ah, no, right there. It's actually pegged into the body. And the same goes for the double cape. It's pegged into the body right there. And I didn't even realize it was a double. I pulled it out and there's two layers to it. The glossiness is a little bit plastic looking, but at the same time, it's so sinister. Mr. Sinister. And I love that the inside one doesn't come all the way up and ride inside the upper one. It stays up in the air like the comic book. I feel like it should be maybe a little bit spread here. The splits should come up and around but I think it would be tough to keep it up in the air like this if it was all separate pieces. Not the softest material in the world. They're gonna stay right there, but the shoulder pads are actually, <laughs> they may be a little bit softer than those. I guess that's to kind of get out of the way if you wanna bring the arm up and around, but I'd be afraid of warping that if you left it like that. And then up at the head, is there any other way of describing this other than Oh, sinister. The bared teeth, the lipstick, the red eyes, the diamond in the middle of the forehead. It's just undeniably sinister. Now my brain thinks that the neck should be white. In fact, that's how they show them on the package. But the metal banding is sculpted there, so I'm okay with it being blue. That was just their choice. It's an artistic decision that I'm okay with. And then the high collar here, same soft material it doesn't get in the way of the head movement. <laughs> it's weird, I wasn't expecting much out of this figure, but the more I sit here and mess with it, the more, ooh, sinister. Although I'm about to go over articulation, I'm thinking it out and I'm thinking, man, this cape is clunky and gonna get in the way, but it just looks so good standing there. You have your hinge, you have your ball, he can look up, can look down. Not a lot of tilt, unfortunately, but he does get swivel. Shoulder hinges up past 90. Swivels around, but like I said, it's gonna run into that shoulder pad. You can bring it out and around. Bicep. Dang, for a big figure, he's got some range in the double elbow. Hinge, swivel. Torso crunches forward quite a bit. Arcs back, swivel at the waist below the belt. Ball coming out to the hip, comes up all the way. Back, out, a little better than Spider-Man. Nicely hidden thigh swivel behind this boot part right there. Double knee comes up to about right there. Swivel at the second boot, hinge all the way back. Hinge forward, not bad. And then forward facing pin for rocker. The cape does throw off center of balance just a little bit because of how far it comes back. You just have to lean him forward just a little bit. Sinister stands at seven inches tall to the top of his head. But as you can see, he's not quite as big as the Colossus we already have. But as far as the old Toy Biz version goes, this has its place. I mean, this is a beautiful sculpt, nice articulation. It's held up over the years, but because of ball hips, thinness of the limbs, and just, I, I don't know. Hasbro's, I feel, is more aesthetically pleasing overall. I like the darker colors of the stripper gear on top of the metal parts. The collar doesn't seem as comic booky while staying a bit comic booky. And then the cape is just more, but I'll always love those boots. But while he's not Colossus big, he's still kind of a big dude. Here is Wolverine and Cyclops. Sinister definitely looks down upon them. And then let's finish up the carded figures with everybody's favorite fuzzy elf, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is two per case, and like I mentioned with Cannonball, we found this wave at San Diego Comic-Con. I was hanging with Veebs, I was hanging with Matt Kay, I was hanging with Unparalleled Universe, and both he and Matt got Nightcrawler, and between the two of them, they had different problems. I'm not seeing a lot of paint slop on mine, but you'll notice on his left side here, the torso piece, this overlay, is kind of coming up. Whereas on this one, and it's probably really hard to see on camera, but the right one on this one is coming up. Also, that arm is completely backwards, but you can see the paint app is on the inside. 
and the bicep is on the inside. So it should be just a twist and fix. But I'm gonna open this one and see how it treats me. Also, there is all the Waves accessories. And oh my God, guys, we finally have a new Nightcrawler in Marvel Legends. Not that the old one's terrible, but let's go through this. First up, like I talked about in the package, this overlay piece is kind of sticking out further than this one, but I was able to push it down a little bit. It doesn't look terrible. It totally works. So ah, I'm not gonna mess with it. But the overall look of the, f it's not crawler. <laughs> I was gonna try to say some fancy words, but that's what it boils down to. It's not crawler. You have the thinness, the litheness, but you have the three fingered hand, well, two fingers and a thumb, two toes, back toe. They pulled off these shoulder flares perfectly. It's an overlay stuck to the body. There's a trench dug in this torso, but it's almost seamless besides, you know, what I was talking about a minute ago. But it's not super bad about getting in the way. It's still a little bit soft, so you bring the arm straight up. Well, almost straight up. I believe the arms are reused from Pizza Spotty, and that's the same for the legs. But the crotch piece is new because it has this sculpted line for the red part, and then, of course, the torso with this trench dug in. It may be similar to a sculpt with the mold redone to fit this overlay, but it's noticeably different. They even integrated that overlay on the back all the way down to the articulation point so it wouldn't stick out. Very nice engineering there. One of the things we found out early was the tail was not gonna be bendy, and while it is a soft material, it goes back to this position. But with the swivel, you can bring it up and around anywhere you wanna go, and it's, I don't know, I'm kinda okay with it. You can have it sticking out to the side. My favorite pose so far comes down and around his leg. He's not taking up a lot of real estate if you want to stand him up straight. The tail is still there and in view, but it's out of the way. It's not going to knock down all the figures beside it. And that's not me making excuses for them not making the tail bendy. Apparently, safety standards at Hasbro or the US or something, the tail is too thin to put a bendy wire in. Toy Biz did it back in the day, but I think Hasbro has higher, well, I hate to say standards, safety rules. Up at the head, definitely a Nightcrawler feel to it, but... I can't help it, guys. Alan Davis is and will always be my Nightcrawler. So it doesn't quite match that, but this is definitely Nightcrawler. You have the ears, you have the blue. <laughs> I was really reaching for that one. But I like the black hair with just the touch of blue on top. I, that makes it feel comic booky. The eyebrows are nicely done. There's a little bit of shadow under the eyes. I'd like to see the yellow of the eyes be a little bit more bright. Just to have it stand out a bit more. Because you, know, you always saw him in shadow and his eyes would be glowing through. I'd like to see that here. Articulation. Hinge with a ball. How many times have I said that? Can look up. Looks down. Little bit of tilt. Swivel. Has a forward and back butterfly joint at the shoulder hidden behind this overlay, but it's not the greatest range, I think, because of the overlay hitting it. Arm hinges up past 90, around, bicep, double elbow. Oh my god, that's what you expect from a Nightcrawler figure right there. Deep hinges, swivel. Ab crunch comes forward most of the way, arcs back most of the way, and then swivel at the waist. Now, before I move on, just to gripe about the torso, this being Nightcrawler, him being agile as hell, I would have liked to seen the Power Rangers articulation. And I think they've put it in a couple of Marvel Legends figures, but I'd like to see the hinge down further and then a ball up above that. That would have gave us crunch and then twist so you could have him you know, in kind of acrobatic poses. Don't get me wrong, that's no slouch. <laughs> slouch. But I feel like there could have been more here. Ball coming out to the hip comes up to 90. Back, not terrible. Out, that's what we want to see right there. Why don't all the Spider-Mans have this? In fact, when I rotate the thigh swivel, it rotates on the ball. And I think that's what we need in all our Spider-Mans. Like I said, thigh swivel. Double knee, oh, easily kicks his own ass. Hinge at the ankle, goes back all the way. Goes forward, oh, nice amount. And then forward facing pin. For accessories, Nightcrawler has just an open hand like that. You pull that out, you put this hand in, and this is a grip hand for his cutlass. It's a nice sculpt. I, I can't tell if it's silver paint or gold. I think it's silver paint on top of the marbleized gold plastic. The fingers are a little bit stiff. It's a little bit difficult to get in there, but once you do, he is not letting go of that thing. And it just looks good overall. But that hand, well, I don't know if that hand will stay on there because that's also good for hanging from stuff, right? Mm. I may have to find some danger room props or something. Like I talked about, the head is a little bit young looking, but there's also extra heads that pops off, pop the others 
on, you pop the others on, get on there. And this is a little bit closer to my beloved Alan Davis. It, the smile is undeniably curt. It just shows his playfulness a little bit better. And then as far as sculpt and paint goes, it matches that first head. But sometimes Wagner has to get rowdy. This is full on fight mode, fangs bared. It's no longer fuzzy elf. This is the demon, baby. Nice sculpt to the fangs and the teeth same nice hair sculpt with the just hint of blue on top the rest is like pitch black but then like the comics they brought the shadow down over the face like he's actually trying to blend into shadow and the effect works a lot but in the comics it was more of a straight line pitch black just the eyes popping out i don't know since i have two of these in the case i may try to tweak on this see if i can darken it see if what happens or try one of these other heads bring the shadow down see what happens oh man he just cuts a beautiful silhouette it's it's nightcrawler nightcrawler stands about six inches tall to the top of his skull and actually i had forgotten that the original toy biz nightcrawler utilized that hinge lower ball joint higher but there was no crunch to that upper ball joint so it gets the same range of movement as this one does like sinister this is one of my favorite toy biz figures it comes across as an older kurt but man that chin was woo sticking out there the likeness still doesn't hit my excalibur look but it does have the bendy tail you can bring it around this one has the bigger feet because it's articulated in two places articulated hands it's a tough call between these two but if you're standing them up again hasbro wins simply because of the better integrated articulation but that's a close one and then i feel like kurt is about the perfect size for an x-men team here's wolverine here's cyclops i it, it just works but i will never stop chasing that excalibur white well i need the whole team at least in the early issues on my shelf here's kitty here's brian we need more we need shadow cat and the original well the second costume captain britain maybe even the third i'm okay with that too and then oh these are some stark wide parts <laughs> with a little bit of blue here and there but Let's build the Wendigo. I wonder if this left leg is going to be as hard as the Sasquatch to get together. No, that fit together much better. Right leg on, but it has the same toughness to the ankles as Sasquatch did. Left arm, tail, go on there. Ooh, and then head. And you know what? I know you may not like that head. I sure know Veebs doesn't. But man, doesn't this look like, well, a Snow White version of a flesh-eating mythical creature from Canada. Like I mentioned, it's mostly reused from the Sasquatch Build-A-Figure from the Deadpool wave, except the crotch cover is longer, hangs down further, plus it has the tail attachment on the back. The neck fur comes down over the shoulders and helps, I don't know, kind of integrate the arms into the overall body a little bit better. We get a couple of different hands. With Sasquatch, we got a fist and an open grip. With this, we got smaller grips on both sides. And then the feet are different. It doesn't have the opposable thumb of Sasquatch. It's got more monster feet with the long claws. And then, of course, the heads. I was worried about how bright white it is and while i feel like it could be bloody it could be dirty it could be dingy i, I kind of like this but my brain's also going to hey we need a white version of sasquatch the blue kicks in just enough on the heavier sculpted fur parts but kind of misses what is well there's still fur right here but you get back it almost looks smooth again i'd kind of like to see a wash on the <laughs> let's do this joke again bright white and then the tail much like nightcrawler but less rubbery you just have a swivel at the ass connection. But it's the head that is the sticking point for a lot of people. It doesn't look like our classic Marvel Wendigo. I think this iteration has been used in the comics at least once, but for the most part, we see it as, well, kind of a white Sasquatch with bigger fangs and kind of meaner look, but still pretty. This ain't pretty. It's kind of ugly, and I think that's why I like it. I, I want my flesh-eating mythical creature from Canada to look a little bit mean. I like the blood staining in the teeth, but like I mentioned, I'd like to see that coming down like he just had dinner or something. This is also the only place we see this darker grayish color to accentuate the longer hair. I'd kind of like to see that on the blue parts and then the blue parts on the white parts. Does that make sense? I think I made that more convoluted than I should have. For articulation, there is a hinge and swivel at the neck. Can look up just a little bit. Looks down to about right there. Then swivels. But it does a nice job of the hair looking like it continues down into the fur right there. So it's not sticking off like the old Toy Biz version. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder uh, comes all the way out. Look at that. Comes up to 90. Swivels, well, that's not the soft. That's not soft at all, actually. So you got to come out, uh, you know, out. That is kind of easy to pop in and out, but... You get a pose, you get it in, I think it's gonna stay. Bicep, hinge at the elbow, comes up, not quite 90. Hinge, 
Swivel. Hinge of the torso comes forward about there. Arcs back really nice though, but you get a big gap. Swivel at the waist. Swivel at the tail. Hips come up to about right there. Back out. How is it that this thick bastard has more leg movement than a lot of other figures we looked at today? Swivel at the thigh. Move tail. Double knee. Nope, not quite, but nice range for a big guy. Hinge at the angle goes back a little bit. Goes forward. More than back. And then forward facing pin. Size wise, Wendigo stands at about eight and a half inches tall, which may be a little bit short for Sasquatch, but I'm okay with that on Wendigo. Here it is with the previous Hasbro Wendigo and then the old Toy Biz White Sasquatch Wendigo, whichever you wanted to call it. The sculpt on this one is nice. I like the look of it and it's more classic Wendigo, but man, the articulation is terrible on this thing. And I always felt like the Toy Biz one was kind of a mess. Long ass limbs, skinny torso, this hair on top sticks out unless you crunch them over, which makes them even shorter, which doesn't work. But on both of these, you get the gray fur, which helps bring out the detail a little bit, and then the messy paint over here. And then to recreate that classic cover, here is Wolverine and Hulk. Hey, shut up, I haven't gotten that two pack yet. So here is the standard release Wolverine, and the San Diego Comic-Con Modern Hulk. Same bodies though, this is what it'll look like. So at the end of the day, a very solid wave, especially for someone like me who read a lot of comics in the 80s, early 90s, a little bit towards the end of the 90s, and then some modern type era comics. This wave seems to be all about team building, well, except for Sinister, but he builds to the villains team, I guess. Cannonball, even for half a figure, and again, I'm not trying to make excuses, but if I had had a full figure, I would have wanted to use the effect because it's cool to show powers in the display. Same goes for Boom Boom. A little bit plain, but man, that pink is striking along with her head and the hair sculpt. And this power effect, ooh, that's kind of great. Both of them together adds to my X-Force team. And I may not have been the biggest X-Force guy, but you start a team, you make great figures, I'm building it. Guardian adds to our slowly growing Alpha Flight team. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we eventually get a white Sasquatch head to make either Snowbird for Alpha Flight or Heather Hudson for Exiles. Mr. Sinister, like I said, a classic villain we needed. He builds that group. The villain shelf is just getting meaner and meaner. Or more sinister. Wolverine's a good modern rendition. I'll take Logan in any flavor. Hopefully, we'll be building more of that team soon, too. But Nightcrawler seems to be the big draw here. Yes, he's not my perfect Alan Davis version, but he's a kick-ass Nightcrawler for the shelf. He can go in the classics or Hasbro, if you want to give me some Excalibur, I'll take that too. And then Wendigo, I know, not everybody's cup of tea, but I dig it just because it's not the usual cup of tea. A wave of Marvel Legends is a happy day. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe, I'll catch you on the foosh.